The exhibition that's being presented is uh, titled Copper Slag. And uh, the title refers to the very special material that these uh, abstract works are, are produced in. Uh, the show is, uh, is organized by Art Gallery of Swift Current in partnership with the Moose Jaw Museum and Art Gallery. And uh, we are sponsored by great folks like Saskatchewan Arts Board and our cities. And this is just a wonderful treat to be offering this exhibition uh, featuring such a significant artist as uh, Robert Scott. The material I use is copper slag, okay? So I use that copper slag in, in my paint to get them tech, give it texture. And so I'm playing with this stuff, you know, in the studio and sweeping it up and stuff. And then I just, and it's just something I really became familiar with, so I just started working with it. In some work, an artist might sort of kind of preconceive uh, the resultant work. They may have an idea for what they want to achieve. And they imagine that in their mind, and then they attempt to produce it. The process that Robert Scott is using is far more exploratory, far more kind of inventive or creative, and uh, because he doesn't know where it's going, uh, it's uh, he's inventing it as he as he watches and interacts with the piece. It was damn hard work. Those pictures, like if you for one of those pictures, you know, you would work on them for. I might work on them for a day on one of those pictures, right? And nothing would happen. You had no, nothing near a picture, right? And so you just tip the damn thing up and all the curve things go on, then you get to try again. And so it became, a, so one of those pictures might be around for quite a while working on it, but maybe the day it worked, everything just happens, right? And, and you're just, it's, it's flowing and you got it, you know? And I was using the material that I use a lot of my paints, but I don't use it that way. So I saw them just like big drawings. And I suppose they were paintings because they had some reflective color, which didn't show in this sh gallery here very much because of the lighting situation. But there is subtle light colors behind that, that I could be a, a subtle blue or something like that, but it kind of interferes, it gives it real life. Now they're not different in terms of how I go about making them, like the way I move around and compose them and all that kind of stuff. It's just such a radical difference in terms of the material. And also, yeah, because they were so much more about drawing, I guess, that's it. Like simply more about drawing than, than, than painting. So, you know, you're leaving a lot behind. You know? See, Neil Young is such a great musician, totally, dedicated to the thing he does, changing on, on, on the fly. And uh, somebody wrote in uh, the Rolling Stone magazine that his only style is that he does exactly what he wants to do. So Neil Young would be Bob Scott of Canadian and not only Canadian music. Bob started at the end of the kind of good times. In Europe, he went and saw great modernist painting at the end, on the dying kind of bed of modernism. So that was good for him and probably helped him to develop the way that he did develop. On the other hand, it was all kind of late with modernism because the real modernism was almost dead because already in the late 60s, the whole way of looking at art of the new generation changed. And that made it more kind of difficult, but really good for him because it was against the odds. And he kept doing it because he is so one of the few artists that I know who are totally, totally passionate about what they do. He can sell, he cannot sell, he will have a show, he will not have a show, but he will do what he has to do. And that's the great, great, great 
quality, really. And I, I love him for that. I had been determined not to chase the marketplace. You know, I wanted about 10 years away from school into, well, at least from art school to, uh, you didn't want the stamp of the institution you come from to be all over you, right? And I think a lot of artists that happens and then they never, they kind of get rewarded for what they're doing and they keep doing that, right? So they don't have the time to figure things out for themselves. And then Clement Greenberg, who would go to Saskatoon and then come to Edmonton. And like he's the only critic that I ever, well, he's not the only critic, but he was the first critic, I guess, that I really trusted, you know? And he was, for example, he was Jackson Pollock's critic, right? And he was only interested in art that served art. You know, he wasn't interested in art that served politics or, and I suppose it, it wouldn't matter what the art was, as long as it was, it was really good. And then I got tired of the dealers. I mean, my, what happened was I had a dealer in Montreal, she died. And I was dissatisfied with one of my dealers in Tr Toronto, so I left them. And then I ended up leaving all my dealers. <laughs> when uh, uh, the co-curator Heather Smith from the Moose Jaw Museum and Art Gallery and myself with the Art Gallery Swift Grant uh, had that first opportunity to go visit Bob at his Cadillac studio just south of Swift Current. Uh, he had three of these works on the go on the floor, so that, that was the largest body of this of this drawing that he had, was working on at one time. And so he he really it, it was coming together, uh, kind of a, a culmination of a of a real series of works after a ten year period. And it's accumulative, okay. And painting is accumulative, okay. And that propels you into making better and better things. And so you kind of get lost, actually. Not so much knowing, you kind of. You're into it so much that uh, it kind of takes care of itself, I think, when you're on the right track. It's knowing when to stop sometimes. It's something that takes a bit of time to, as a painter, to know when to stop, I think, because you can overpaint. You're just doing it because, you know, it's like, it's like knowing that you push C on a piano when you need it. You no, know, it gets like that. Well, as a public art gallery, we always offer opportunities to uh, uh, help with interpreting the artwork or, or in this case, uh, offer a visit with the artists themselves and, and hear from them and learn a little bit about their background and, and appreciate what they're doing just a little more. And so we hosted uh, uh, a visiting artist uh, or a kind of coffee house event. And uh, we were able this time to actually put everybody right in the gallery with the work all around them, which was an ideal way to conduct this visit with the artist because Folks were able to watch the artwork throughout the entire evening. And as the artist talked about the process and his development over the years and what his uh, you know, interests and pursuits are, the, uh, the audience was able to, uh, to see the work firsthand or all around them. I don't usually talk at shows. It was fun, you know, and, and people don't have the chance, I don't think, to see paintings as much like this or certainly like, like those very often. So. I came from here and he never had a chance to see anything, so when I was young, so it seems important to let people in on what you think. And those kind of things can change your life, and so that, and it also makes, makes you feel like you're really a part of that, like they're no different than us, or the cavemen even, you know? Like, they're not just dumb people who walked around without, they club in their hands, I mean, they're pretty sophisticated when you look at their art, I mean, amazingly so. And so, it's just been a very important human activity. It's been going on for a long time, and I'm really glad to be part of it. I want to do a good job. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max TV programming is now available on Max TV On The Go at maxTVOnTheGo.sastel.com.
Thank <laughs> you.